The second half of this unit is going to be all about electrolysis and electrolytic cells. So in the first half of the unit we talked about voltaic cells. Now we're going to switch to the second type of electrochemical cell and talk about electrolytic cells. This video though more specifically is going to be based on free energy which is delta G and the Nernst equation. So this video is going to be very math based. If you need to review any information, this slide is simply a list of resources to help you out. So if you need to review galvanic or voltaic cells, use this first link, and then as well as the first, the first 50 minutes of this second video. If you need to review cell potential, and we're going to talk about cell potential at non-standard conditions in the next couple of videos, but if you need extra help with it, then use this link and start at 50 minutes and watch from 50 minutes to the end. And then if you need help with electrolysis and Faraday law once we get there then use this link at the bottom so these are just some extra resources just in case you need extra practice or extra review so far we've learned two ways two values that we can use to determine whether or not a reaction will occur spontaneously these are the two values that definitively tell us if something is spontaneous and that's delta G and E so delta G is Gibbs free energy and if delta G is negative Remember, that means the reaction is spontaneous. If E, so if the cell potential is positive, the reaction is also spontaneous. Remember that delta H, delta S, those don't tell us definitively if something is spontaneous, only delta G, and now we've learned cell potential, which is E. So there's actually a mathematical relationship between cell potential and free energy, and that is using delta G equals negative NFE. This equation is on your AP equation sheet, and we have free energy is delta G. N is the number of moles of electrons transferred. So this is why balancing each half reaction and creating the overall reaction is so important, because that tells us the number of moles of electrons transferred. That is the number of electrons that you cross out. So if you have five electrons on each side, that means you had five moles of electrons transferred. If you had to multiply to get both of them to equal... 10, then 10 electrons transferred. F is Faraday's constant. Okay, this is a constant on your equation sheet. Faraday's constant equals one Faraday, and Faraday is just the quantity of charge on one mole of electrons. So one Faraday is actually 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons, or 96,485 joules per volt per mole of electrons. So these are on your equation sheet. Again, you just need to know how to use it in this uh, equation. When you calculate delta G, delta G is going to be in joules per mole because notice that Faraday's constant is joules per mole. And then E is your cell potential that's in volts. So that actually cancels out with this volts in Faraday's constant. Uh, if we have moles of electrons, that'll cancel with this moles and then we're going to get joules. Or a lot of times we represent it as joules per mole. So favored conditions with any reaction. Spontaneous reactions are going to have a positive cell potential. They're going to have a negative free energy value and K, your equilibrium constant, should be greater than one. Because if K is greater than one, that means that your products are favored. Think back to equilibrium. If K is greater than one, that means that your products are favored, which means the reaction will proceed spontaneously. At equilibrium though, this is gonna be important, at equilibrium, cell potential is zero, delta G is zero, and K equals one. So let's look at an example. So using standard reduction potentials, so this comes from Appendix E from your reduction potential table, calculate the delta G for the following reaction. So we're given the balanced equation. We need to calculate delta G using delta G equals negative NFE. So first thing we need to do, because it tells us using standard reduction potentials, we need to look up the reduction potential for each of these half reactions. So we have iron solid going to iron two plus. Make sure because this is being oxidized, you're gonna have to flip the equation and flip the sign of E. And then we have nickel two plus being reduced to Ni. So remember that the total cell potential is equal to the uh, reduction half reaction plus oxidation half reaction. And we find that it is negative 0.28 plus 0.440. Okay, if you have questions on how you got this, look at your reduction potential table. Reduction is Ni2 plus to Ni. That comes directly off the chart because it's reduction potential. And then oxidation, iron to iron 2 plus, 
because it's oxidation, that's the opposite of reduction, we flip the sign. So the overall cell potential of the cell is 0.16 volts. Notice this is positive. That tells us based on cell potential, we expect it to be spontaneous. But that's not all it's asking us. We have to actually find delta G. So delta G equals negative NFE. Well, let's figure out based on this overall equation, how many electrons would have to be transferred? So we have iron going to iron two plus. That's losing how many electrons? It's losing two electrons. Ni two plus is gaining two electrons. So that means that your number of moles of electrons transferred is two. So we have delta G equals negative. Don't forget this negative. You have this on your equation sheet. Just use it. Make sure you have the correct equation. Negative two moles times 96,485 joules per volt per mole. That's Faraday's constant times 0.16 volts. You cancel everything out. You find that delta G is negative 31,000 joules. That's okay. Delta G Remember, it's normally given in kilojoules. So I converted it to kilojoules. Delta G is negative 31 kilojoules. So based on cell potential and delta G, we can say this reaction is spontaneous. So again, just looking at how everything is related, we've talked about almost all of these equations. So delta G and E naught are related using the equation that we've just been looking at with Faraday's constant. Delta G and K, remember those are related because delta G is negative R, T, L, N, K. That's on your equation sheet, All right? So we can actually relate E to K using delta G. We can just set these two equal to each other because delta G equals and delta G equals. So we can actually have negative N, F, E, equals negative R T L N K, rearrange everything to get E equals. E equals R T over N times F times L N K. So we can actually get E related to K. So remember we talked about this equation when we looked at thermodynamics. So we have delta G, notice this is not not. So this is at any condition. Delta G not is at standard plus RT ln Q. It's Q because we're not at standard conditions. So if we plug in negative NFE equals NFE not plus RT ln Q, we divide both sides by negative. There should be a negative in front of this negative, there we go. Dividing both sides by negative NF, okay, we get the Nernst equation. E equals E naught minus RT over NF ln Q. This is the Nernst equation. This allows us to calculate cell potential at any condition because if we have Q at any condition, we can then find cell potential, okay? When we actually plug everything in for R, T, and F, we can actually reduce that number to 0 0.0592. So when we want the actual Nernst equation, we're going to use this one down here. So it's E equals E naught, okay, E equals E naught minus 0 0.0592 over N times log of Q. That's just from rearranging everything. So you don't have to worry about the entire derivation. Really, I want you to focus on this equation. This is the Nernst equation. This is how we can determine cell potential at non-standard conditions. We're going to use the delta G connection to examine effect of concentration on cell potential.